Good evening and welcome. Tonight we're going to be going over the history and geography of Moldova. As you can see, I'm really zoomed in. <laughs> My hands are huge compared to Moldova. It's a very small country in Eastern Europe. Here's pencil to help point out its geographic points of interest. It's bordered by two countries, Romania over here. All on this side is Ukraine, and as you can see, it is landlocked. Right in the middle here is the capital city of Chisinau, and it's a very interesting country. I know a few of you, some of my viewers in Eastern Europe have been excited for Moldova, and I've always wondered what the deal with Moldova is. So let's start off with the elephant in the room, Transnistria, as you can see here. Transnistria. So this region, all in here, has declared independence and functions autonomously. They have their own passports, their own police service, their own currency, their own everything. Uh, but nobody recognizes Transnistria pretty much. I don't think, like maybe Russia does, but I'm not quite sure. But Pretty much the world considers it part of Moldova, and especially Moldova considers it part of Moldova. So Transnistria has its name because it borders the Dniester River, which you can see makes up this border. Transnistria meaning on the, the other side of the Dniester River. And on this side we have the Prut River. It's border with Romania. Flowing into the Danube. Moldova generally is very very hilly. They don't really I mean they don't really have they don't have mountains and It's very forested as well. Lots of very Big green forests and all the rolling hills Moldova sits on what's known as the Moldovan Plateau The Carpathian Mountains you can see are just over here. So it starts to flatten out in this region that's where Moldova sits. And essentially, that's the basic geography of Moldova. Very small country and very obscure country. Uh, let's go into its history so you can learn more about it along with me. The first people would have arrived in Moldova around 44,000 years ago. And the early cultures of the, the BCE before Common Era were just farmers, cattle ranchers, basic things like that. Nothing too complex. The Roman and Byzantine empires did get some territory in what is now Moldova between the 1st and 7th centuries CE. But this area didn't really become like a, a territory until the 1350s when the Principality of Moldavia was formed. A Romanian voivod, which is like a, like a lord, kind of like a prince almost, um, hopped over here and claimed this land uh, as his own. And it was originally a vassal to the Kingdom of Hungary. But just a couple years after Moldavia was formed, it was taken over by another voivod, who broke off its ties with Hungary and established closer ties with Poland, which at that time was the big rival of Hungary. Throughout the next couple hundred years, a lot of other people came through this area. In 1420, the Ottoman Empire started encroaching on the area, really interested in it, and the Crimean Tatars did invade parts of it, and definitely the Mongols came through doing what Mongols do and taking over. So Moldavia was like, um, help. Sorry, the guy next to me is like sneezing like crazy. Oh my gosh. Anyway, um, Moldavia eventually became a tributary to the, uh, the Ottoman Empire, but they still had very close ties with Poland, who at that time was known as the Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth. Um, Poland and Lithuania became one country. You can learn more about that in my video about Lithuania. Anyway, jumping ahead quite a bit 
1806, the Russo-Turkish War broke out, obviously between Russia and the Ottoman Empire, the Turks. In 1812, they signed a treaty, and in that treaty, the Ottomans ceded pretty much all the territory of Moldavia over to Russia. And over time, Russification was implemented into the area, trying to eliminate more of the original culture out of the area. And um, they even renamed it to Bessarabia, trying to just like erase what they can. Flash forward again to 1917. Russia is going through a revolution. The, the government's collapsed. The Tsar's been thrown out of power. So uh, the Moldavian Democratic Republic is declared. And uh, that year they voted to unite with Romania. Romania was just forming at the time. It was made up of various other little principalities like Transylvania and Wallachia, and Moldova became one of those that joined with Romania. And this is when Transnistria really started to break apart, because they were like, we don't want to be part of Romania, but they didn't really have a choice. So the USSR forms, right? And they eventually retake Ukraine as part oh, you can't see this is Ukraine they retake Ukraine into the USSR and Transnistria here is considered part of Ukraine, they are always much more culturally closer to Ukraine than the Moldovans or Romanians or what have you so in 1939 the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact was signed between the USSR and Nazi Germany. And it was just to decide who would control what in Europe, basically slicing it in half, saying that the Soviet Union can control this half, Nazi Germany can control this half. So this area came under Soviet control. By 1940, the Soviets came in and took Moldova back. And it was, I mean, the 1940s were not kind to Moldova. The Russians came in and did the horrible things that Soviets did once they retook an area. And then in the next year, 1941, a Nazi Germany invaded with the Romanian army assisting because the Romanian government at the time were very closely allied with Nazi Germany. And from 1941 to 1944, the Nazis did what they were best at, basically. Um, suppressing people as much as they could, exterminating any ethnic group they considered not good enough for them, and all of those horrific things. Anyway, obviously the Soviets invade and take their land back, and the 1940s didn't close out well, even though the war was over. There was a big adjustment period back into the Soviet Union, there was a big famine in 1946, but following that, Moldova actually did pretty good for itself. The Soviets actually kind of helped out in terms of their economy. Industry really took off in Moldova. Lots and lots of buildings were built, which are all still there. Very Soviet blocky looking, you know. But in the 1980s, the late 1980s, the Soviet Union starts to crumble. And there were a lot of independence movements in Moldova. Not as peaceful as some of the other independence movements throughout the USSR, but not terribly violent or anything. But, like, way more violent than others. Anyway, Moldova declared its independence on August 27th, 1991. And here's Transnistria, also known as Pridnistroiva, who were like, we don't want to be a part of Moldova. How many times do we have to say it? We don't want to be a part of you. We want to be with the USSR even though at this point the USSR no longer exists. In 1992, they had a four-month-long civil war, but it ended with just like an agreement to disagree in a way. And in Transnistria, if you visit there, uh, it still functions as if the Soviet Union was still there. It's like time stood still. And it's a really interesting place, honestly. In Moldova. The 1990s was also not a very kind decade to Moldova. Inflation made things horrendous for the people living there, and honestly, the economy has never recovered from that. 
Not to mention a lot of politics and oligarchs have took advantage of Moldova. Uh, at one point, I think it was in 2014, an oligarch stole the equivalent of 1 billion US dollars from the Moldovan government, which was about 10% of their GDP. Uh, there was a constitutional crisis in 2019, which in a nutshell was just uh, politicians bickering back and forth over how the government should be ran. Uh, just infighting. It, it wasn't a concern of the people who couldn't afford to buy food or housing or anything like that. I'm just concerned with their own interests, you know. But in November 2020, they elected a new president. Her name's Maya Sandu, the first female president of Moldova. And she's very pro-European. I was just reading her Twitter before filming this, and the, I'm filming this in December 2021. She's just been in a lot of talks with the EU for financial aid. So Moldova has never joined the EU. They have a bit of a predicament in terms of that, since there is a big Russian population within Moldova that do not want to be a part of the EU. There's even some areas down in the south here, known as Gagauchia, where um, it's a different ethnic group, the, the Gagaus, and they are a bit different from regular Moldovans. Uh, they're more Turkish, so to say, and very... Um, like more pro-Russian than most Moldovans, uh, not as pro-Russian as in Transnistria, but they did say that if Moldova joins the EU, they will declare independence and try to create their own state, things like that. So, um, you know, it's a, a very tense back and forth over what should happen with Moldova, but Moldova has accepted a lot, lot, lot of EU aid, like um, money to help out the government just as if it were a member state of the EU, so it's like a special little category within the EU where it's not a member, but the EU helps them out because they, they don't want these people who are already very poor. It's a very underdeveloped country compared to the rest of Europe around it. Um, you know, they want to help. And Moldova has a very interesting identity if you watch Eurovision. Um, and Moldovans really try to outweird all the other countries. It's very funny. And, yeah, basically, that is where Moldova is today in history. It's really interesting to see where Moldova is going to go in the future. If they're going to continue down the path they've been going on of intense corruption in the government, or if they're going to finally join the EU. And if they join the EU, then who knows what's going to happen in Moldova. We do not know. Anyway, we'll see how that's honestly going to be it for tonight. Normally I would have a book to show you some pictures of Moldova, uh, but my library, I mentioned this before in my last country video, uh, my library just got like a ton, ton of new country books, and a lot are for countries that um, didn't have books before. Moldova is one of them. They're ordered into the library system, but they haven't arrived yet, so I don't have it yet. So. Hopefully in the next month or so, we'll return to Moldova and we'll flip through that book and look at the pictures and read the boxes and all those good things. So we're not saying goodbye to Moldova quite yet. The next country we're covering. Oh, I just pointed toward it. <laughs> the next country we're doing is in the same boat where they also have a book coming in, but it's not in yet. And um, yeah, we're going to flip through a lot of books in the future because I'm excited for these new books coming. So yes, again, I'm going to end it there. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you found this video relaxing and educational. And I hope that you have a very good, 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 good.